Hi, and welcome to this live reading from The Elements of the Crown, The Elements of Kemdaria, Book 1, by K.L. Moody, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1. It was an honor to train at the, the Academy. Talise recited the words to herself over and over again as she stood stiff-backed in the crowded deck of the riverboat. If chosen, she'd be ripped away from the home and family she loved. She'd leave behind the life she knew, all to train at the Academy. An honor. It didn't seem so great to her. A stuffy, humid heat hung thick in the air of the lowest deck. The lowest deck had no windows, offering no sunlight and no view of the river to help with seasickness. Two small lanterns hung from the ceiling, each giving off a flickering glow. Whenever the boat jostled, several people were thrown off balance. Army gripped Talise by the shoulders, tucking her into the corner where no one could hurt her. The top of Talise's head only barely reached Marmy's elbow, which meant she could, couldn't do much to free herself from the cover corner. Instead, she folded her arms over her chest and pouted. They'd been saving for this trip for months. Two years, really. They had always known it would lead here. She always imagined it would be less stuffy and more exciting. Most people from the outer ring of the continent, or the storm as it was usually called, couldn't shape. Talise had the ability to mold and manipulate elements while most of her neighbors in the storm could only worry about their next meal. The academy would be safer than her harrowing and vicious life in the outer ring. She never wanted to live in the storm, but she didn't like the idea of being away from Marmy either. Almost there, Marmy said, her voice like honey and sparkles. She looked down at Talise and gave her a smile that was meant to ease fears. It helped a little, but not enough. Especially because the riverboat jostled again and a heavyset man lost his balance, nearly toppling Marmy to the ground. Talise let herself be tucked behind Marmy's skirts after that, this time with no complaint. She didn't understand why they had to ride in the lowest deck at all when both the higher decks had plenty of room. At least up there she could feel a misty breeze on her face and smell the wet soil. Truthfully, she did know why they stood in the lowest deck. It was the same reason they didn't have enough food and couldn't learn to read. They were from the storm. They were the lowly lowliest members of the continent of Kandaria, criminals, thieves, murderers. Once people were sent to the storm, they never left. Even if the original crimes had been committed ten generations earlier, people still never left the storm. They never left because life in the storm required crime. It required stealing from trade wagons just so there would be a slice of bread for dinner. It required threatening guards so they wouldn't torment a neighbor. It required saving rainwater just so there would be something to drink after a day of labor. Why it was illegal to save rainwater didn't make any sense to Talise. No one from the storm could shape the water, so it was far from dangerous. It just seemed like another way to control the people. Another way to force people to commit crimes, which then forced them to stay in the storm where they belonged. People never left the storm. Never especially not children who were seven years old, unless they got into the academy. Talise sighed. Marmy had been saying they were almost there for the last 20 minutes. Maybe she'd be right at some point. A toddler's sharp shriek broke through humid air of the deck. The mother looked mortified as she tried to appease her child with promises of what they would see when the riverboat stopped. Cherry tree blossoms and green tiled buildings, fresh air and gravel on the streets only small glimpses of mud instead of a big mounds of it. The toddler didn't find any of these satisfactory. The heavyset man gave the mother a hard glance, and he wasn't the only one. Everyone shifted to move away from the child, but that only made him more upset. One man put his palms over his ears, looking pointedly at the mother. "'Please, Tareth, please,' the mother begged. "'We are almost there.' The child looked more terrified by the minute as the bodies around him became angrier. His shrieking bounced from wall to wall while his little eyes filled up with a well of tears. As Talise watched the child, she tried to think of a way to help. Not for the sake of the other pa passengers, they could jump into the river for all she cared. But the child looked so frightened. He needed a distraction, something fun. Talise lowered her body until her hand hovered just above the floor of the deck. She'd been practicing hard, but even a little shaping still required her absolute attention. With narrowed eyes and a clenched jaw, she willed the dirt on the floor to rise into the air. It took a minute, but soon little dust particles rose up in a cloud. She clenched her, clenched her jaw tighter. 
A cloud wouldn't do her any good. She needed enough dirt to make something the boy could see easily in the flickering light. Something he couldn't miss. She narrowed her eyes even more. Her stomach tightened with anticipation. Finally, a solid clump of dirt broke apart and the little dirt pieces flew up toward her hand. Now she had something she could work with. Taking a tentative step out of Marmy's skirts, Talese shaped the dirt so it would hover above her palm. She turned her back to the other passengers and bounced her eyebrows up and down until she caught the boy's eyes. When he finally looked at her, he was still shrieking. She gave him a crooked smile and looked down at the hovering dirt. Then she bounced the dirt until it hovered as high as her head before it fell back down only a few inches above her palm. The sour expression on the boy's face hadn't relaxed, but the volume of his shrieking had lowered. She did it again. This time, she wore an expression of surprise as if the dirt bounced of its own accord, and she hadn't shaped it at all. The boy quieted mid-shriek as his eyes opened wide. Now that she had his full attention, she shaped the dirt until it formed a long line. It didn't look like much like the snake she was going for, but it was close enough. She had to pull her stomach muscles in tight as she moved the line of dirt to look like a snake slithering. Again, it didn't look as neat as she wanted. But this was probably the first time in his life the boy had seen a citizen of the storm shaping. He was more than mesmerized. After the snake, Talise tried a bird. Her epic failure of that produced a giggle from the boy, who then clapped his hands and said, More! Before she could think of something else to make, the riverboat floated to a stop. Talise made the clump of dirt bounce a few more times while the other passengers unloaded. When no one was left in the lowest deck besides her, Marmy, the boy, and his mother, Talise finally let the dirt fall to the floor. Thank you, the mother said, lowering her head so she could be eye-level with Talise. After Marmy poked her in the back, Talise remembered to respect her elder. Lowering her head in a short bow, she said, You're welcome, ma'am, but it was nothing. Are you going to be tested for the academy? the woman asked. After Talise nodded, the woman gave a smile so genuine it didn't seem possible for someone from the storm. She wiped a bead of sweat off her forehead, leaving behind a short streak of dirt. A shaper from the storm, she said, shaking her head with disbelief. I never could have dreamed of something so wild. Marmy nodded to the woman and started nudging Talise forward. Come, the testing begins soon. Wait, the woman said. I just wanted to say how special you are. You made my son laugh when everyone else just scowled, and you're a shaper from the storm. You'll change Camdaria for the better, my dear. I'm sure of it.